Notion databases have had a problem for a while, and it has to do with the database templates feature. So if you've watched my content in the past, you probably know that in a Notion database, like this projects database, we can create templates where, for example, we can embed a view of a connected tasks database so we can see all the tasks that are due on this project. And that works really well, except for when you want to update the template in the future. You can do that, but you quickly realize that templates are kind of like a blueprint. You can update the blueprint, and that's going to apply to all new pages in the database, but all the existing pages are gonna stay the same. They will not be automatically updated. But today, Notion actually released a feature that's starting to fix this problem, and it's called tabbed layouts. And I'm just gonna jump right into screen share mode because I want to explore this feature and show you what I learned. So this, is one of my most important databases in Notion. This is my content database where I basically plan and execute all of my YouTube videos. So what I wanna do is show you how this tabbed views feature works. And to do that, we're going to use a connected database in my system called the B-roll database. So by default in my system, I have this B-roll page that gets applied to every single one of my YouTube projects. And basically, all of these are B-roll items, shots and animations and images, and even chapter markers that are associated with this particular content project. So right now, this is just a regular old linked database block, but we're gonna see if we can essentially recreate one of these views using Notion's new tabbed views. So let's go back to the database page itself. And if you watched my Notion layouts video, which would be quite useful to have watched for this video, because this is kind of an addition to it, right here, we're gonna have this customize layout button. So if we hit this button right here, we're gonna see this new view where we can customize the layout of all the pages in this database. We can pin properties to this heading section. We can create this side mounted property group. But what is brand new is if we click off of these selected areas here, we can see that we have a new structure option called tabbed. And if we switch from simple to tabbed, what we're going to get is an additional row of essentially tabs we can create that are views of databases. And they are essentially alternative views to the normal page content. So we're gonna have this content tab by default. This is gonna show us everything we put on the page, basically what we've always had in the past, but we can add to it additional tabs, which are going to be links to specific databases that are already connected to this database. We've got quite a few options because I've built quite a few relations into Creators Companion, which is what this system is, and we're gonna pick my B-roll relation to see what we can create. So by choosing B-roll, over here, I have what essentially looks like the same uh, set of view tools that we have when we create a linked database block. So let's go ahead and try to create that uh, time-based view from my B-roll page that I showed you earlier. So over here, we already know that we are linking to our uh, B-roll page right here, our B-roll database. We are using a table layout. And if we want to, we can go and do a board layout or a list layout, all that kind of stuff. But I do think we want table here. Uh, and I think I wanna go ahead and wrap all of my columns. I do wanna open pages in SidePeak and I do wanna show my page icon. So if I go back here, I can go into my properties like normal. I can choose which of these properties I want to show and I can choose their order. So what might be useful would be to open a new tab and actually give myself a reference for what I'm creating here. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, add the name property. We're gonna have the time code property. We have our ingested and our in video properties. And then we're gonna, we have our gather tags property. So let's see if we can find those real quick. Now I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. I've got meta, I've got location, edit stage and gatherer. Let's find those really quickly. Meta, location, edit stage and gatherer. And then finally, it looks like I'm showing this little favorite property here. So we're gonna add that as well. And we're gonna go ahead and hide all of the other ones. So just click these as normal. And just like that, we've basically recreated all of the property visibility that we have in our B-roll page. So next, let's go ahead and actually uh, change the widths of some of these properties. And I think a lot of these can be just a bit thinner than they currently are. So next, we can go into our filters and our sort criteria, and we can use this as a reference just to see what we need to set up here. So uh, the only filter we have is where the content relation contains this video, and I think that's gonna be set up by default and will be something that we might not even be able to change, but we'll check there. Uh, and then we are sorting by our time code in ascending order. Let's go ahead and recreate those. So our filter looks like content is page containing this view, we actually don't need to change anything. That's exactly what we want. And then for our sort criteria, we're gonna find our time code property, and we're gonna go in ascending order, just like we did over on that page. And I think that's pretty much all we're going to need to do. Let's go ahead and apply this to all pages. And I do wanna point out that this is the key here. We're applying 
a change to the structure of the database, which is fundamentally different than changing a database template. Because once I hit this, we are going to be making this change to every other page in the database. So here we can see, like normal, we've got our content tab and everything that I had normally before is here. But instead of having to go over to this special page to see my B-roll, I've got this tab and I could very easily switch over to it. And if I go to my Thomas Frank Explains channel, I can also go to perhaps another video that we've done in the past. So let's scroll down here to this completed section. And let's see here, Notion finally has native recurring tasks. That's another one that we created recently. So if I open this, we're gonna see that the B-roll tab is present in this page too. That's because it's present on every single page in the database. We've made a change to the structure of the database, not just to a blueprint going forward. Now, I do have some initial feedback about this feature. Notice that in my B-roll page, I actually have multiple views of this database, and I actually use all of these. I've got this time view here, which just sorts all of the shot lists uh, items that I have by their timestamp value, but I also have this gather view over here, which groups all of them by their gather tag. So I can go and do all the overhead shots at once, all the whiteboard shots at once, all the screen recordings at once. Very good for batching, which is very efficient. And we also have other views like this meta tab over here, which allows me to more efficiently uh, collect my chapter markers, which I use to generate my timestamps. So for the purposes of working on B-roll, I have multiple views that I kind of wish I could show more easily here. I kind of wish I could create a tab that would contain multiple views of a database instead of just one. Because you could imagine if I created all four of those and then also tried to create views for say uh, research items or tasks, we could end up with a lot of tabs really, really quickly. So I love this as an initial like first shot at this, but I'd love to see the ability to tuck multiple views of a database inside of a single tab. And I don't think that would break the overall philosophy here of allowing us to change the structure of the database um, I think it would actually just enhance that. So anyway, uh, that's it for this video. It's a pretty simple change from a Surface perspective, but it's a pretty profound change under the hood. And hopefully you find it as useful as I think I'm going to. Anyway, if you want to understand this layouts feature more in detail, I made an entire video right there about Notion layouts. And there's another video right here that the algorithm is going to uh, recommend to you, I suppose. So check that out if you're curious to learn something else that I don't currently know about. Otherwise, thanks for watching and maybe go touch grass.